How 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 are you? How how am I? Have you never heard that question before? <laughs> I'm doing fine. I don't think I've ever heard it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair like, point. How, how how are I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. How are you? I'm all right. What up? Is this is this, this your is leader? It. This is it. <laughs> this is the whole episode, guys. This is it. This is it. <laughs> Come on, this is this is a feel good movie. That's why we saved it for part two, so we could uh, so you get all fired up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just saw that Pornhub map, the search of popular terms of Pornhub. Oh. It was like a joke because Kevin James was like the number one thing in in, in Tennessee. <laughs> um, but I feel like Keith Macri eating a banana. It's gonna it's gonna climb. Classic comedy. Your your wife's gonna come in, slip on the slip banana on peel. <laughs> oh. Anyway, speaking of slipping on banana peels, oh. let's talk about the goods. That Don Reddy sure does put on a show. <laughs> These people are excited about the savings. The goods. Live hard, sell hard. Live free, sell hard? I wanna say it's the full title of this film. Live hard, sell hard? Is it live? I thought it was live free, sell hard, but maybe no, it's no, live it's hard, like sell like hard. No, no, it's like live hard, sell hard. I know sell hard. We're gonna sell we hard. We can discuss. No, no, no. It's two hearts. Two hearts. <laughs> two, two, double the hard. Double, you gotta be double hard for this episode. That's right. That's right. I'd settle for single hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, this is, for me, was gonna fall into the category, I suggested this movie, what a fucking surprise. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's, that's my line. <laughs> uh, I suggested this movie to be because I believe it is underrated as we base things on the Bible of rating systems. Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes has a score of, I believe, 27%. 27. I believe it's 27. Yep. Yeah. Perhaps more interestingly, interestingly, the audience score is not much better. Which surprises me a bit. I just, I all, I usually expect those to be, if one is really low, I expect, you know, I expected it to be more like in the 50s at minimum. Like, you know. Nah, people, people are influenced. People are, your sheep, all of you out there, your <laughs> sheep people. You're just like, oh, if, if Rotten Tomatoes doesn't think it's good, I'll give it a, a ugly tomato from whatever it's called. I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to it. I think you're all stupid. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think 27% for this film is grossly underrated be because of one how just purely funny it it actually is. If you sit down and watch this film and don't think it's just funny, period, I just think you're you're just wrong. Like objectively, it's funny. Whether you like the film or not, you think it's good, like fine, debatable. It's not, no one's saying it's fucking a great film. But it's just purely funny, period. And the, the performances, the comedic performances in this film, I would put up against any, any your, your favorite comedy, you, not you, but you guys. Your favorite comedy, because the comedic performances in this film are, 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 are top notch. And I think the reason, the main reason that this film gets a 27 rests on the shoulder of one person. Do go on, I'm because I'm curious to, you know, you, you claim underrated. I don't so agree with it, uh, but I yeah. think the reason that people shit on this film is because of Jeremy Piven. I think nobody likes Jeremy Piven, and I think nobody wants to give Jeremy Piven the credit he deserves because this this role is perfect for him. Like he's he's a smooth talking I, asshole. I'm a fucking stallion. I should be owned by a goddamn Middle Eastern sheik. I think or, you could you could make the argument that you know quote unquote nobody likes Jeremy Piven today, but in 2008 when they were shooting this film, he had just won three Emmys in a row and was the star of maybe the most popular show on television. So that's a hard argument to make 
in in the moment. I think there was a lot of yes, he was yes, this was the height of I believe the height of you know probably more specifically than me, the height of the entourage. Ari what Gold. the hell is that supposed to mean? I never watched that show. I hate that show. It's problematic. <laughs> jerked off on that to that show. <laughs> yeah, no, he. we I, I read that he was nominated right? and won four years in a row the Emmy for 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 Ari Gold, um, which which is a is amazing. Lizzie's little work of fiction journal proves that I'm guilty, like Lindsay Blohan proves that fame is fucking healthy. At least initially, I think Ari Gold was an amazing character and hilarious. I mean. Jeremy Piven was hilarious, so, uh, and the world agreed. I know you look back now, it's probably not, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's probably and no not one agrees, no one ever light. thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, but like, it was really funny, and he won a lot of awards and prestige, and this was certainly him trying to, uh, ride that, that fame into a leading man position. Yeah, because he was always sort of the side character in, until that. So, so, it goes back to the question, because I don't think you can say that when it came out, Jeremy Piven and people's dislike for him is the reason it didn't do well. So why didn't it do well? I, then I don't know. I, I, because other than that, other than that, I don't understand. I don't understand in terms of comedy films, why, why is this not one of those sort of anchorman quotable type films? It's just as goofy, it's just as silly. It's got an ensemble cast that I think is amazing. Like I, I, do, I, don't, I don't think I think people need to watch this film again. Go watch this film again and tell me it's not one of the better comedies that came out no in one, the 2000s. No one who, who, who didn't really like this movie when it came out 13, 12 years ago <laughs> is going to watch it today and be like, yes, this is phenomenal. Because there is a lot to discuss on that Sure. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess. There's, gonna be, there's some sensitivity <laughs> I'll issues. Tell you, I know why it didn't do well. Why, why? Why doesn't it do well? Why didn't it do You're well? You're going to laugh at me. I am. I got... I got two reasons for you. One is the title. And I believe this wholeheartedly that they that they fucked up that title. Why? It should just be called The Goods. But they 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 add a colon and live hard sell hard, which is clearly just supposed to be the tagline of the movie, but they put that into the title. That's why I didn't go see it. What? Yes. You didn't go see it because of the title? Yes, because it looked like they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> That's what I, that I remember thinking that I, I, I completely, like vividly remember, like, what is this? Because that segues into my second point. The movie is kind of a try hard. It's, it's, I feel like it's trying pretty hard. Um, like, like it felt, and I remember feeling this a little bit in, when I, at first, this first popped up on my radar in 2009, that they're really trying to make this a thing. And there was almost an air of desperation to it. Like that, I'm just telling you what, what my feel was through the trailers and through the marketing. I was just like, okay, you're really, like I loved Ari Gold. And like, I, as I mentioned, I, I thought Jeremy Piven was very funny. He's an old school, he's hilarious and old school. Like he was kind of coming out, he's building up to this moment. Didn't we lock you in a dumpster one time? I got out. But it was like, okay, so you're trying to make Jeremy Piven a thing really, really hard. And he's like, it's not that, that Don Reddy is so similar to Ari Gold, but it's, it's, it's enough. He's a smooth talking asshole. Yeah. And it just felt like you're really trying to milk, take this thing that everybody loves, Entourage and this character, and put him in this kind of try hard vehicle. Now, there will be some similarities at the same time. Don's journey is so completely different than anything Ari Gold would do. But at the same time, the people that love Ari Gold will not be disappointed by Don Reddy. Like, it just, it just didn't have this, it wasn't like cool. It wasn't cool. And I think that, that was its problem. They put the tagline as a part of the title, Keith. <laughs> I, that I mean, is the, such a, the title like a low... thing is, 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 is silly for you not to go, it's a comedy, it's trying, the title itself is trying to be a joke. So you could argue like, not the place for it in a, but what's the difference between, uh, it sounds like a little bit like Hot Shots Part Deux to me. It's, it's, it's like ha trying to have fun within the title of the film. That's all yeah, that. Yeah, you can have fun within the title of the film, but just like you're literally putting the tagline into the title. I know it's a weird thing to get hung up on, but, but sure. like I said, to me it just shows that like they're already making bad decisions. Like <laughs> the most important decision of the film, you, you muffed it. <laughs> You know what no, I mean? Like, you, you blew it. So, and, and I don't have faith for the rest of it. And maybe that's partly why, I can't even agree to it, but, but, 
but that has nothing to do with the actual film. Like if you go and you watch this film and you want to have a, a bunch of laughs and some, you know, some just a good time. Like this is the Godzilla versus Kong argument. Like it's just a good time. It's fun. You just shut your brain off. Like that's what this film is. It's not trying to be Citizen Kane. Like it's, it's just trying to be funny. And, yeah. and put you in some fun situations. And even on top of that, I would say it's, it, 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 it checks the boxes it needs to check as a film. Uh, again, I'm not gonna make the argument that it's like a really good, solid film, but it doesn't abandon uh, the, the, the notes of filmmaking that need to be hit. Because there's a story and there's, real, there's character uh, goals and wants and desires, there's character arcs within the film, there's, a, there's an assemblance of a story and just surrounded by these weird and interesting characters that have purpose within the film. That's generous, that's the, generous. The film's just underrated. The film is just underrated. And if you watch it now, you probably will hate a lot of the things that people used to poke fun at in the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. To, this is the crazy thing. Well, I guess we can get into this right now, <laughs> like, because this is what I think we should do. I think we should make a list of everything that is offensive and anyone who was a party to them in this film. We should never support any project they ever do. We should again. cancel I think them that's completely. Fair, and I think that's right. You're gonna lose. You're gonna lose every comedic actor today. <laughs> Catherine Hahn. She's out. She she's loses. Gone. She loses her spinoff. Her one division spinoff. <laughs> yep. At a, yeah. At a, she's no longer in the MCU. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just bef before we get into it, I I'm going to try and remember, We together we're going to try and remember the names of every cast member that is of note. Give me your, your rankings. Give me like your top five performances in this movie. Oh, top five. Um, or your favorite five, you know? What's his, uh, man, I'm, I just, I'm so bad with names. I wanted to look these up before. Just throw it at me, I'll tell you. The, the um, Robinson, Craig Robinson. Yeah. I love Craig Robinson. DJ Request. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny joke. That his name's DJ Request. DJ and Request, he, and, he refused, and he hates. And he takes it so personally. Request, and he, like, and he gets super dark. Nobody tells DJ Request what to play. Let them tell you what to play. They lose respect for you. Rob Riggle, I think, is incredibly funny in this film. This, the, like, it's, abs it's purely absurd. It's purely absurd, but... His, he, he plays that, like, he's great for that character. Like, he's yeah. great to play that, this loud, obnoxious, like, childlike <laughs> wonder. Yeah, he does, like, a, he does a good job. He like, does it seems a... kind of genuine. Yeah. <laughs> he does yeah. a good job. Yeah, he does a good job. It's like a good wriggle character. And then I love, it's, it's love is not the right word. Uh, I, I don't even know how to say it without sounding like a monster. As long as we're being honest, I am. <clears throat> I have something I want to share with you. I think I want to make love to a 10 year old boy. What? Oh yeah, I, don't, I didn't think that was funny either. I hate that part. <laughs> <laughs> delete, delete. <laughs> and you know who I love too? Because he's just classic is um, Alan Thicke. Yeah, Alan, yeah. Alan Thicke does a great Alan Thicke job. Like his, that confident suave. Yeah, like, yeah, he's got it. Money can buy anything, I got, yeah. I'll do it. He's great. He's great. Like everyone, I think, is casted really well and, and hits their notes as they should. And as a collective, just make for a really fun time. And you don't have to spend time with any too much with any one character to enjoy all of the comedic bits. But who did, did you like anyone or any particular bit specifically? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I, I honestly was just like so impressed uh, with Brolin. Because I thought that's a really out of character character for him to play. I don't know why, but right off the bat, I like you. I have a lot. What's going on? <laughs> him playing like a, like an aggressively homosexual, like, like <laughs> dude in a movie like this was just not something that I expected. And I was like, oh, it's, you know, good, like good on him for really going all in, like yeah. really committing to that to that you know yeah i think i think that was really funny every, every almost everything he said made me laugh like i may be old-fashioned but the man says wear your boner pants i wear my boner pants i think katherine hahn is this the scene stealer i think oh, she yeah. is she is maybe the funniest character in this movie um obviously <laughs> some of that humor is a little troubling yeah, i totally beat you <laughs> oh what are you gonna do to me now what you better 
bag me or something. I... Babs, he's ten. Ten and a half. Do you hear that, Ratty? Ten and a half. But I mean, that was that's kind of the point of like an R-rated comedy is you're supposed to just like have a laugh, and I mean, we shouldn't we don't have to explain this to people, but you know, it's like it's supposed to be a little. It's supposed like that's the funny because it's supposed to be so absurd and wrong. Yeah, like that's yes. the kind of movie it is. Uh, but <laughs> but <laughs> very, yeah, very, and just you hear that you hear that ready ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Just the, uh, the, 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 I, I, I know I'm, this is, I get into these bags where I, where I just like overanalyze these little comedic moments, but the best part of her performance is her fighting herself because she knows it's wrong, but she can't stop it. <laughs> and it's so funny. It comes like that subtle nuance just comes out on screen. You know what else is really fun? Going to a motel and wrestling. I love wrestling. Oh. I can get you into a figure four leg lock. Oh, like this. Mm, you know, your legs would be all tied up. Sold. Oh. You'd be screaming. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, very, it's very funny. It's very funny. It's, it's, oh, She's man. not supposed to be someone you look up to. It's okay. <laughs> it's supposed to be absurd and stupid and wrong. Yes. I mean, thank, let's, let's thank God that it wasn't the other way around. Uh, well, I mean, wise. yeah, but that's that's what people would would say that that joke would not fly. <laughs> I get your general point that there's like a minimum level of like trying to round off these characters' little that's mini journeys. But as we've discussed before, and this is probably part of the reason why this film uh, isn't <laughs> the timeless classic that that you would like it to be. There, there is nothing really grounding it. You know, we talk about the great comedies, like, almost, they could be dramas on their own, in a sense. And this one doesn't really have that. It has that real skeleton of a plot that it's, and, and a lot of it is just, like, funny stuff for the sake of funny stuff. Improvisational lines, things that don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, there's not anything that's, like, you can really hold on to uh, in terms of, you know realism. Yeah, you're right. And and I don't, but I don't think it's trying to be. I think it stays with no, the for world, sure, for sure. the universe that it built. Like it doesn't I think there is a when it, there's no there's no real yeah, it's not grounded in our reality, but I there is a reality I think it's grounded in. It's just more extreme than ours. Mm. Like I don't think it I don't think at any point like there's not like a dragon that like flies in all of a sudden and it's <laughs> like oh, it's not the end of Greece where they fly away on a car. Where would that come from, guys? You know, like they fly it, away in a car? Yeah, the end of Greece. Well, I don't remember They that. literally, the car flies. At it the end does? of Greece. Yeah. Look this up. Look, Google that. <laughs> the specific details about why this film didn't do well are one thing, but then just like, it seems like the film should have, it when, in, when combined with all these, pre, the past decade of, Films that are similar. You got you got Adam McKay and Will Ferrell that are producing. Yep. Will Ferrell's got a you know an extended cameo. Same year as The Hangover, if I'm not mistaken. I think 2009 is also The Hangover. Uh, it might be 2008. It's eight okay. or nine for The Hangover. So I right in that one. same time frame. It's, what what you think the like? I'm sure everyone's going to say The Hangover is better than The Goods. Yes, it is. But why? But, 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 but... Because it's, it's funnier and it's a better film. <laughs> uh, it's a better film. It's a better film. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. It's a better film. It's based in reality. That, sure. That helps. That helps. Uh, it's just, I don't It's not funnier, in my opinion. Well, it's, it's, it's a different style of comedy. Sure. Sure. The, 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 the goods is, is that Anchorman, improv, goofy a joke every second that we can do it and then the hangover exists in a real world where there's a ton of jokes and a ton of punchlines but it's it's a real story it's a real thing that's happening it's a different kind of comedy usually the more timeless comedies as we argued in our anchorman episode in my opinion are that first kind or the hangover yes. kind where yes. it's a, where it's a real life it's it's coming to america it's trading places yes. it's it's those kind of films cuz they're better a films movie like Anchorman or Step Brothers, which is just basically like an improv class, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is different. Not, not, not. You know, still very funny, very funny. But I don't think they have the, 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 the legs to last forever because they're so, they're so of the moment as a general statement. Fair. Yeah, I, uh, I hate to agree with you, but yeah, I guess. <laughs>
I, a funny observation mm -hmm. is I honestly think that, to some of our earlier points a little bit, I can't imagine that if, th if this film didn't exist, okay, if this film did not exist, and today you challenged someone, you challenged a class of screenwriters to say, you know what, based on the, the politics and the, the social climate of today, write a film, pitch me a film that would be the most offensive, uh, unable to make film today. And I think you could not come up with something more than this movie. <laughs> like this movie checks every, it's like they knew what would be what the would ultimate be? worst things. 13 years later. If you, other than... <laughs> <laughs> the two big things that stick out to me, and tell me if I'm missing... <laughs> tell me what I'm missing. The two big things that stick out to me are, are the Catherine Hahn, uh, Rob Riggle relationship, and uh, Ken Jeong getting attacked for... The hate for, crime. The, yeah, the hate crime. <laughs> Let's get him! Yeah. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> it's, I, I, I guess I shouldn't laugh at it, but uh, <laughs> it's, he I'm laughing. So this is, here's where, the thing. I'm going to say this because really we had funny. the same conversation with Blazing Saddles. We had the same conversation with Blazing Saddles. That scene is wildly funny, not because of the crime. It's, it's funny because of the ignorance. That's why that scene is so funny. Ken Jeong, who I don't love like unilaterally, but I do think has his moments. Ken Jeong's uh, eyes, when they start darting back and forth and he begins to realize that <laughs> they're not on the same team anymore. <laughs> yeah. And, and, the, and like that, that little comedic suspense is so funny, but only because we're all realizing what an ignorant person this guy is and how this is turning to something that it shouldn't be. It just shouldn't, yeah. like we know that it's wrong and I'm, I'm laughing at the, the moron in this situation. Yeah, yeah, because not he's, not even, he's not even uh, Japanese. I'm not even Japanese, I'm Korean. <laughs> oh so, man, why did yeah. you say so? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he's Korean. Like, like that's, all that's of it is part. incorrect, all of it is incorrect and we're laughing at those who believe that to be true, like we're laughing at them. Uh, and we've yeah. had this conversation many times before. So that's why I say that it's very funny. Not the attack, the attack is not what's funny. But some people can't make that distinction, unfortunately. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's those two things majorly. The, the, the making light of, of, a, of a pedophilic relationship, uh, the Asian hate crime, which is a <laughs> hot topic right now, and it stars Jeremy Piven. Like, those are the things that you can pitch, I feel like, to be like, oh, in, in no way can we make that we movie. Make <laughs> and then there's smaller things, like, uh, um, just like, the, even the closeted nature of, of Brolin's character, like, that those kind of, like, I don't know that you could make those kind of jokes right now, um, where there's a character who's like, aggressively closeted gay and is just constantly trying to like, because he's like sexually harassing David Koechner. But uh, ironically, um, that's whole David Koechner's whole thing in Anchorman. How do you mean? He wants to have sex with Ron Burgundy. When this all gets sorted out, I think you and me should get an apartment together. <laughs> <laughs> David Koechner, the, the both, it's even more aggressive in the sequel, which isn't a great movie at all. But he's just like, they have like a wrestling match. He's like, get in here. I need you. Uh, I don't like think I made it that, I don't think I made it that far into the sequel. <laughs> there is uh, a lot of, uh, but th those two movies I think came out before. Well, when did, I don't remember when the sequel came out. The, the mid, it was like a, the early teens. The, yeah, so it came out after this. Yeah. So yeah. I get what you're, I hear what you're saying. But yeah, no, I'm not, and I'm not, com like, you know me, I'm not, you know. The comedies are supposed to be comedies and, and push the envelope and sometimes you're gonna miss some, sometimes you're, sometimes it's fun. The, the, all this, like not all the stuff necessarily, I don't wanna make that blanket statement, but a lot of the stuff in this movie that is horribly offensive is still really genuinely funny. Um, right. I love, in, in that Ken Jong scene, I love, uh, I just love the tonal shift of Piven pulling out and she's like, well, okay, okay, wait, we've all just committed a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> That, that delivery is really, really funny. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it, that scene in particular seems like it could be a scene from Blazing Saddles. 
It's that same kind of yes. energy, like you said. Yeah. Like it's 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 poking fun at the absurdity of these people's ignorance and racism um, by doing something very ignorant, and racist that we're all laughing at. But like, that's that's the line you straddle when yeah. you're making a, uh, an R-rated comedy. I think if you're trying to uh, trying to push the envelope a little bit. I know your type. You know, it's all the thrill of the hunt. I get it. I mean, you crave it. You, you corner it. But Mr. Reddy, let me ask you a question. Do you know what to do when you catch it? Are we talking about pussy? Oh my <laughs> God. The film is underrated. You should go watch it. Give it a chance. And don't be too uptight when you do so <laughs> to just... <laughs> When Will Ferrell tries to use a dildo to brace his fall, it's it's that's the perfect amount of Will Ferrell. I didn't think it would end this way, but I gotta tell you, I always knew it would. Falling to my death, dressed as Abe Lincoln, holding a big purple dildo. This is how I, th I threw it up. <laughs> it's that is the perfect use of Will Ferrell. It's the per just like just like Wedding Crashers. It's it's a small side character. That He's has, like the closer. Yeah, but also has merit to the story in both of those films. Now that you think about it, th there's merit, there's reason for that character to be in the story. <laughs> there's purpose. Well, yeah, Keith, that's how movies work. <laughs> you you want to? I can name a bunch of movies where that that's not how movies work. <laughs> well, that's in the. I'm saying that's the idea of how that's that characters should be in the story because they need to be in the story. No, not for comedies. Comedies that doesn't actually apply. Apparently your new instructor is running a bit late. I I'm sorry, it's only five to... Yeah, so he asked me to lead you in some warm-up exercises. Right, put your hands in front of you like this, just relax, and then squat up and down, but fast, faster, faster. There you go, really fast. Faster, faster. Uh, it's too fast. I didn't think Will Ferrell was that funny. He, it's not his most funny performance. It's not his most memorable no, like, performance. I thought it was funny when he was skydiving, but when, then when they brought him back to be like the angel in the junkyard or whatever. His trust was betrayed by time. Balls and wiener. They let angels out of heaven to cuss at people? Yeah, of course. That's what's going down, dipshit. That, that bit was just like, okay. You know okay. What? <laughs> like, I don't know. It just, it just wasn't, yeah, them singing, the singing. every line behind him. It's funny. Like, okay, they're really, <laughs> we're really going for this. Yeah, you got Will Ferrell. You can put him in the movie. Yeah, it's true. Uh, it's, it's funny. Do you know who directed this film? I didn't until uh, I watched it last night, which was interesting. For those who don't know, Neil Brennan. Very, very funny co-creator of uh, The Chappelle Show directed this yeah. film. Top to bottom. It, I just don't know how this film fails. I don't know how it... I don't... There's too many good people to be part of it, and, and it's funny, and it works. Like, the jokes work. It's not like they just kind of fall flat. I just don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. What you needed, honestly, no disrespect to Mr. Piven, you needed like a Wilson brother to be the star. Uh, if this is Owen Wilson or Luke Wilson, this movie is probably a bigger, I mean, certainly a yeah. bigger success. And you're probably you're right. a fairly good size success. If it, yeah, you're right. If, I, cause if Owen Wilson does this, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. Because that's kind of what I'm com confused about too. I get how comedies specifically just kind of like fizzle at the box office. They're really hit or miss if you don't have a lot of hype behind it. Like, I, I don't think comedies, are, comedies aren't like a draw for someone to get out of their house. So that part I get. But comedy over five, seven years, that's how I feel like you judge comedies. It's not when it comes right out. It, it's, it's sort of once it gets in circulation, once it gets uh, streaming, once it gets DVD releases, you know, like once it gets in people's hands and they can watch it at home, things tend to find these like cult followings in terms of comedy specifically. I'm shocked that this movie hasn't found its way onto like FX at two o'clock in the afternoon on a Well, it's on because a of the, it's because of the content. That's why. This movie can't ever get a second life unless we come full circle again in 15 years and we're making, you know, offensive comedies and everybody's not so worried about every little joke. But Wedding Crash is on these... Comedy Central every fucking weekend. Yeah, but but even Wedding Crashers, there's not like an Asian hate crime and pedophilia. It's my first like that, Asian. What? That was my first Asian. No, not a hate crime. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> and they cut that out, right? I think I caught part of it on on. Uh, Wait on Comedy Central and they don't say my first Asian. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. 
Yeah. So, I mean, the, you know, yes. Wedding Crashers is, uh, is you know, has there its are, problems there's, too, there's, It has its problems too. I get this. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just surprised it hasn't developed with just how funny it is. And all the people who are in that film have gone on to become huge stars in their own right. Like literally every one of those people are could yeah. headline their own film today. So no, for sure. with all of those things, I just don't I just don't understand I don't understand. I I would love someone to explain it to me why this film has not developed a cult following over the last ten years. Who are you? I'm done ready. And I got the goods. The thing I'm confused about Another thing I'm confused about, I should say, is, is the writers of this film. These two writers wrote a film before this film, and it was uh, Balls Out is the name of the film, and it stars <laughs> uh, Sean William Scott as like a tennis coach, I want to say. I've never seen it. So they write that, that movie, and then they write this movie. And this movie, despite its quote-unquote failure, it still made money. And then they have never wrote another film. They have two credits. This and, and Balls Out. And I can't find any more research as to why. Yeah, no, that is curious. That is curious. We'll have to, have to look that up. You feel like, I, I uh, tried. I Googled it at least for 10 minutes. <laughs> Real deep dive. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully they see this and reach out. I'd love to know. I'd love to know Look, your story. Look, if they see this and reach out, I just want you guys to know, this is the greatest film of all time. <laughs> I, I love everything about it. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's underrated. Please reach out. I'd love to, to talk. What would you tell them? Would you pitch them? What would you pitch them? <laughs> uh, it's private. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pitch them my idea about the, the guy who's, uh, who's, who's reincarnated Jesus Christ, but doesn't believe it because he's an atheist. Well, that's very funny. I do like that. It's brilliant. I do like it's copyright. That it's fucking copyright. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got. I want to. I want to write it. I haven't wrote, written it yet, but I think I might have mentioned it to you. Two guys trying to unravel a, the silliest conspiracy theory, but it unravels until it like, actually goes all the way up, and it just points the hypocrisy of idiots believing conspiracy theories, but it just like completely unravels. That's just, that's just a documentary right now. <laughs> not, that doesn't sound funny at all. It that sounds is, like every it time would I be, turn on the fucking news. It would news. be hilarious. It would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one I'll pitch. I'll pitch that one. Okay. Copyright it. Those are just the two, it's just a taste, fellas. It's a taste. It's a taste. Taste, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What are you, anything else? Nah, we should, we should end it. <laughs>